It's about time I sat down and started working on something that I'd like to improve. And that something today is color theory. <laughs> that thing. If you've been here a while, you've probably heard me mention it numerous times whenever I decide to actually use color because it's just something that I can't quite grasp. I've improved, but I have not grasped it yet. And for that reason, I thought I'd take a little time and work on it. I actually have taken a little bit of time already and watched some more videos, maybe for the third or fourth time about color theory, trying to just retain some of that knowledge. Now it's time to actually see if I have and uh, see what I can apply. So I'll just draw myself a little uh, character. We can start this off. Now I'm thinking what might be the best way to start is either end up drawing like the same thing over and over again, maybe. Depends how bored I get. But I think if I start maybe grayscale and just focus on the tones and values, because if I can't get the tones right, how am I ever going to get the hues right? How will I ever get the hues right? You know, hues. And the more shapes that overlap each other, I think the harder I usually find making the color scheme work because you have so many overlapping tones and values and hues. So I don't know if I should try and start simpler at first or not. Oh well, we'll just figure it out along the way. <laughs> it's about improvement, not perfection. Now color theory is important for every single part of your drawing, including hair color and skin tone and the outfit, everything has to mesh together, which is one of the reasons it's so difficult is because it just includes everything. And I have heard that uh, markers are one of the more difficult mediums to like get decent color theory. And so I thought for a second, maybe I would try watercolors for this, but then I realized I use markers most of all. So I'd kind of rather just learn with markers. If that makes sense. Try not to make this too complicated. <laughs> But at the same time, don't want to not be proud of it either. Looks like a lasagna noodle. Before we start adding color to this, we do need to swatch out some colors. Step one in color theory. Some thing I'll just take to some neutrals. I also have some Copic markers. These are all neutral grays. They've got some juice in them. So, tones, tones, tones. When it comes to tones, you don't want two that are too similar next to each other. So, let me swatch these guys all out before we even bother adding in hues and getting really confused. So when I color, I usually like to pick a skin tone first and then work from there. More recently, I have taken into account like whether it's a cool skin tone or a warm skin tone, but I'm not sure I've done anything else but that. <laughs> and I think if I actually colored the outfits first and then picked a skin tone that complemented the outfits, you have more freedom to use a more exciting color. But obviously with grays, it's not as big a deal. So I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. Okay. This is where I get a little nervous. These two grays are very similar. Our cool gray zero zero and our neutral gray number zero. So maybe we can use these in conjunction with each other. And if this works out, we'll try and use the same pattern of colors, I guess, in our next illustration, but start incorporating more hues. I don't know, I'm kind of just winging it as I go. I'm thinking I'll go to the slightly darker though, who one for layering. Now we've used the two lightest tones. Go up to the next darkest, which are these two. We have cool gray four and neutral gray four. Maybe we should just stick with the neutral. This is this color, right? We should still probably keep it further from the skin if possible. Maybe we'll keep this white because white is also a color. I'm saying that really loudly because I just remembered. Often do forget. So <laughs> let's try coloring in the sneaker. I'm thinking I might also use this for the hair since we only have one more darker. If it is a lighter color. I can always build it up and layer it with the dark color. I do think there is enough difference in tone there or value. I can't remember which one of those words you're supposed to use between the skin. So that works. I actually layer it up a little bit. I might do the same thing with the shoe where I feel like it. So we don't have any overlapping tones that don't work yet. And we still have one more darker gray. Let's use that for the outfit. So we have the darkest sections kind of separated by skin, except for right here. One option would be to darken this, layer it again, especially around where it overlaps with the most similar tone. Let's make the matching skirt. I think I'm gonna use this in that darker section of the sneaker. It doesn't overlap with anything else anyway. So what I'm gonna do is actually layer it again near the light hair, really push the contrast there. So now it's looking good. I'm seeing contrast there. I do think the hair in like where there's shadows needs more work. So let's go back to that one color we didn't use, which was neutral gray two, I believe. Throw that in as like a shadow color. 
So let's darken the top of the head so that it gets lighter as it gets closer to the shirt. So I'm gonna layer over the top, but not blend it all the way down. So right now our darkest tone is in the center and at the bottom. So the only place I could think to even add it would be the top. So what if we just use the darkest gray and layered that on top and blended it out with the hair tone, create like a gradient, which will add more dark tones to the top. So I'm gonna decapitate both of these just so I don't have to worry about it. Dual wielding action. So we need the darkest one up at the top. I'm gonna blend that out, but we already used as the hair tone. I could probably use this back here to add shadow. Blend it out with this hair tone. That kind of goes against what I just said about keeping all the dark tones at the top, but there we have it. Oops, I just colored in the nose. Blend that out. So now we're just adding more contrast by so using the darker ones wherever I feel like it. Blending it out with the lighter tone. And hopefully we're not losing any contrast here. I'm definitely learning that it's something that requires a lot of effort and time right now. So I have to be willing to put in that time and effort if I wanna see the improvements. I do like that. We can try and go in with a little bit of like a white gel pen or a white pencil and try to add some highlights. Okay, so now that I've laid that groundwork and that works, I want to move on to maybe drawing like the same character. It doesn't have to be in the same pose because I'm not too lazy for that. And start applying some tones, but I don't think I want to like go super crazy yet. Make it a subtle transition to more color over here maybe. And we'll see what works and what doesn't. Hand on hip, classic. Let me just refine some of these details so I can add some line art. Okay, have that little hair piece stick straight up. So this time I wanna try and incorporate a few colors. And since these grays are all very cool in tone, let's use a cool color maybe, like purple or blue, Tahitian blue. It's a magical place. Ooh, that is pretty. Let's just see if it works, cause I don't actually know if that's gonna work. Let me try layering it on top of this. What do we wanna be blue, folks? Why is hair the first thing I think of? Let's so far start same way we did the other one. So the plan is to not lose any contrast, but start adding in some hues. This one I'm just gonna add in the one hue. But not lose any contrast, say it out loud. Let's not lose any contrast. I already wanna just add a little like blue eyeshadow. I'm thinking layering this color with this third. No, yes, yes. This one, we use neutral gray four, which is similar in value to this blue. We get this color blue and see how different those are. So we can use that instead of, I guess the shoe color maybe. Layer it first with the gray and layer that with the blue. Then we could actually probably use this straight blue color for the laces. Don't know if that fits into what I'm trying to do here, but I did it. We could probably layer a little bit more blue where we want it to be darker. So we're adding in some tone and saturation at the same time. Ooh, okay. There is definitely more contrast in this gray and that gray than this blue and that blue. So let's try going over it with that same gray. Just bump it up a notch. See if I do it in small places at a time. It does seem like it kind of helps. That's not bad, but let me try going over it with the blue again, just to blue it up. Now this is white here, but I feel like I could get away with just coloring it in blue. Well, we'll leave it for now. It does look a little muddy, but let's just carry it through and make our final assesses, final assessments mm. when we're done. I use the darkest for the outfit. Kind of thinking about just using blue for that, like without anything else. Ooh, actually that might work. There's more similar in tone already. So let me just do that. Now I don't want to use gray on that blue because I don't want it to get less saturated as it fades into the background. So I'm thinking if I get a cool blue, you'll notice this is not a warm blue. Well, actually it is a little bit of a warm blue. <gasps> Shoot. Okay, this is the one I want. This is much cooler. So let's layer over it with our blue again. We can blend it out a bit. All right, I don't really like the way it shadows, but I have to embrace it for this particular drawing. It's kind of pretty. That's a bit of a Pokemon gym leader vibe. Now what I'm worried about, because I went in with that darker tone on the hair, it's now going to sort of blend in with this outfit, which is the exact opposite of what I did with that hair. So I've already made a mistake, but let's go in and add that same color, this dark gray. So it's neutral gray number six for the outfit. 
see how similar those two are? It's not going to work. We're either gonna have to layer up the back one or find a way to lighten it up. The bottom skirt's gonna work because there's just nothing else down here. The first drawing I drew it kind of scrunched up so there was more overlapping, which I mentioned is a little bit more difficult because you have more overlapping shapes and you gotta make the colors work. I don't hate that. If I had a lighter blue, do I have a lighter blue? Ooh, this could work, we could use this a little blush to bring the blue into this light gray color. Go over maybe the whole thing. Bring the cool tones into this. I might actually try and use the straight Tahitian blue for the nose. Blend it out. Well, we'll let that dry a little because if it's still moist, it's gonna bleed out. Just like watercolors. And let's use the mid-tone blue that we have for the kneecaps and blend it out. It's not the juiciest light blues. <laughs> Might take a little effort. It's one of those ones I kind of need to refill. So this is the most exaggerated cool skin tone you could probably get. There's ways to incorporate that into a more natural looking skin tone. So that's something I'll have to gravitate towards as we move over. Blend out, come on. So I do think we're losing a little contrast here. One way to solve that might just be using straight black on this. This is also the only place where we haven't used blue yet. So I might just layer it with our darkest blue. And let's just see how that looks next to the mid-tone blue mixed with our darker blue. We'll just see how these layer differently. Because when it comes to markers, it really comes down to how you layer. Oh man, I like it better already. I think I will take this, go over this dark section of the sneaker. Ooh, ooh. So now we have an analogous color scheme that includes an actual hue. I think with the next one, I'd like to incorporate a second color. See if I can pull that one off. Cause this one did seem a little iffy, but I kept working at it and now I feel like it works really well. Let's try using this on the lips. It's our darker blue. Basically this mixes the grays and the blues to create a pretty cohesive color scheme. And what I would normally have just done is just use the blues, which does that actually not work? Because this works really, really well. I'm very happy with this. I feel like it looks better than most of my marker drawings, but is it because of the grays or is it not? Let me just draw like a little miniature version of this and use just the blues, see if it actually looks worse or just getting really lucky here and things are working out. I mean, luck still isn't quite it because I am thinking about my choices very strongly. <laughs> Let's just see. So basically I'm just going to take these three blue colors and layer them the same way they're layered here but without any grays. They definitely look different. I don't know if I could definitively say one was better than the other. Okay. Okay. The one difference is definitely that's a little bit more saturated than that one. But I do think this one has a bit more impact. Just the use of the gray specifically in the outfit and the shoes creates more contrast than this one has. It is an analogous color scheme and those are one of the easier <laughs> to get away with as long as you make sure you use similar blues with different tones. So let's move on to adding in maybe a secondary color of some kind. So if this was analogous, we could go with complementary. This might take a couple tries because complementary color schemes are very difficult. I'm gonna like lean forward with our hands down like this. It's not the most flattering pose. Bit of a poop squat. Okay, this one may be a bad idea. Just, I don't know why I'm making the pose more difficult. Maybe we'll just leave that and we'll move over here to draw another standing pose very simply just so we can really focus on the colors because I think with that one, I'm not worrying about the right things. I wanna have my mind Totally focused. Her outfit's really not anything special. I wonder what I could change about that. Maybe s squash up the sneakers a little, make them a little bit more deformed. And maybe it's got some kind of like design element that can use the two colors that we're gonna use. And if we wanna kind of keep that curvature, what if we like add another one here? And then that's the slit. I'm keeping that element a little, uh, lasagna noodle and I put it in the ponytail. <laughs> now let's try and add a third third color. Well, it's technically a second hue. We're gonna go complementary. The opposite of blue is like yellow orange. What we definitely need to do is just make sure that the yellow takes up as little surface area as possible. So it's just like an accent color. So I'm thinking for like this, since we have created three shapes here that can be different colors, we can use like the blue, a little bit of yellow, and then like the blue mixed with a different gray there. Let's try and just do all cool. So I think that's supposed to be the next easiest. So let's put away these yellows. Let's do analogous. So if we use purple and blue, and then we mix those two. 
We get this color and that's our analogous color scheme. Let's see if I'm learning anything. Here's a light purple. Let's use a really saturated blue down here. I'm mixing it with the yellow. Oops. Right now this looks like a jacket I had in the 90s. So then for this mid-tone, we could use white, but I want to use the same color we used here. That way it actually looks maybe like a continuation of the same character in some way. Yeah, it's just a lot of saturation going on. And I think toning down one of these colors is going to make a big difference. So memorize what this looks like. Doesn't look bad. It looks fine. There's contrast between all the colors, but I do want a little contrast and saturation as well. Like the purple is a little less saturated, so I might go over that with a brighter purple. That's too dark. Is this dry? Dry! I'm just gonna layer it with this pink. So I'm mixing Heath with Viola. I'm gonna take that dark neutral gray six. I don't think we need to layer either the other ones with gray. I like them being more saturated. Now for the skin tone. Oh, we could use like the ice blue, but then use purple over top of it to kind of warm it up a bit because purple's closer to the warmer tones. So let's use that ice blue color. Pale porcelain blue. That's a really pretty name for that color. Try to use that really light purple. Heath just moves it slightly in a warmer direction, but I'll layer it again with the blue to tone it down so it's not too crazy. Do the same thing for the ears, mixing between those two, toning it down a smidge. Kneecaps. Now we're not using this for shading. For shading, we want another blue, or we could use another purpley tone. Okay, I don't want to add too much purple. I think that is moving in the purpley direction here. I want it to be more of like a Mm, just a little, little hint of purple, but we did blend it in with the skin tone, so that does get our mid-tone there, which should make it analogous in the end. Let's use mid-tone blue for shading, kind of like we did there. Oh shoot, that's the wrong one! Oh, I wanted this guy. You want to mix the grays that are similar in value to the blue that you're using, or <laughs> color that you're using specifically. Definitely separated it from that blue. We're still using a lot of markers though. So I don't know if I'm not quite grasping it as well as I would like, but I'm getting good results. So I'm gonna keep going. Let's color the hair exactly the same as we did it there because I love it. It looks fine. No need to mess with something that ain't broken. Basically we just colored in with this Tahitian blue. But this one, I went darker on the bottom. I like how saturated that is without like any gray. Okay, looking at them next to each other, I don't think I layered that with any gray. I do want a little contrast between the back of the ponytail and this next hair section. I'm not quite getting it right now, so this might be a good opportunity to bring in the gray color, tone down the saturation, and create contrast that way. So the closest gray, neutral gray six is actually what we used there. So maybe I'll pull it back one more. I don't know if this is going against everything that I learned, but I'm, I'd like to not mess it up. Oh, this does make sense. I'm glad I went with this one. Make it a little bit more blue and less gray. I do wish I used less dark blue on the bangs because I guess I didn't do it there even though I thought I did. I think I just layered it again with this here. I did use this for like eyeshadow. Let's mix the purple with the blue for the sneakers. I think it'll be smart to add a little bit more of the mixed color if we really want this to look like an analogous color scheme. So layer our two mid-tone purple and blues. I'm leaving the blue on top because this drawing is very overwhelmingly blue. <laughs> I will leave this purple. Actually there's not enough contrast there. Shoot! I don't want to darken up this purple because because this color is already darker. So let's go over that with our darkest gray. Just really bump up the contrast. We can go over it again with the purple maybe. Actually, I'd say it's probably on par with that. Maybe just add some white details. Ooh, I like it already. Okay. Do you think we need more purple? Something like this. Just darken it up a smidge since there is room to grow. Pumps up the saturation. Blend it out. Going over it a little too much. I think I need some gray here because again, it's just, I'm using the same color as the skirt, but I'm pretty sure I can get away with that. Let's move into a light gray, probably four. Now grays are not recommended for skin tones. Yeah, let's just layer that mid-tone with the purple instead. Pop it out a little. A little less dead looking. I think I'll just leave those straight up purple for the blush and then maybe use the dark purple for lips. Probably shouldn't put any highlights if it's in shadow. I can do a little rim lighting in shadow though. Ooh. There is my analogous color scheme. I think we do need to try one where I use a more natural looking skin tone. Let's just try to do the same drawing maybe, but with a skin tone and we'll see if I just need a cool skin tone to layer with this. If I can make this work, I think we'll have learned something here. Let's move over. Little bag of flour for the body, leg, 
Ooh, we could probably try this the pose we had originally up there. Push the shoulders forward a little bit more. I'm gonna give her some earrings just to add some more shape contrast. Just create a big shape for the hair. Basically, I create a big wobbly wobbly and then I chisel away at what I don't think is necessary anymore. And if like the whole thing seems unnecessary, that's when I'll erase. And then that, so the purple that I was gonna use for the scrunchie, maybe I'll include in the earrings. Since I wanna draw the sneakers, I'll pull them down this way. Make sure it's the same size as this foot, roughly. Now because this leg's coming this way, I feel like this leg needs to go back a bit more. Just to make it look less robotic and chunky chunky. This knee needs to come forward a little. Make it more like, <clears throat> like it's pressure. <laughs> I do think this has a bit of this going on where it's just focusing on the wrong part here and I'm very sweaty. Something about it feels like it's man spreading. It doesn't suit what I'm looking for. I think I just want to keep the legs more dainty, especially since she's just wearing a skirt. I guess that's one of the biggest reasons why. It's not the slouching that's the problem. It's just the legs, I think. Ooh, but with this pose, can I draw that design on the shirt or will it get lost in there? I just have to make this work at this point. I've come too far. Now this is gonna require some shading to make the pose work because there's a little bit of like foreshortening and such. Oh, you know why she doesn't look right? She doesn't have the little hair swoop. There go. Straighten out the back. Yeah, these take a little bit more time to figure out. Just want to elongate the torso. This little noodle here, cylinder thing, is a leg. The foot will be coming out from that in the same angle. She's sitting in that really terrible way that preschoolers aren't supposed to sit because apparently like damages their posture for life, but whatever, it's art. <laughs> I'm forgetting that part of the butt is behind this. And so I was trying to draw like the full length of her thigh there, but that doesn't make any sense now. There comes a point where I've got to just let it go, let it go to college and live with the consequences. I've done what I can. It's time to let it fly. And try again on the next child. Just add some line art then. Go to sneaker. <laughs> look like moon boots. Some line art. There's obviously some issues, but I am happy with it overall. All right, so we wanted to try something where it used like a natural skin tone. And we've used all cool colors so far. So if we're going to maintain what we already have, which is an analogous color scheme, we could do like a almost split complementary. I mean, I don't think that's what it would be called, but it uses the analogous and then has the one complimentary color, which would be a warm color, like those yellows we took all the time to pick out. But I'm thinking instead of mixing it with the blue and getting that green, we'll mix it with the purple. What if we just use like a generic kind of skin tone that's on the cooler side, like Ash Rose? Don't tell me you're dry. Huh. Anyway, something on the cooler side, like um, maybe an ivory. It's a bit cooler than like straight up yellow. We could even mix it with our pinky purple. That looks doable. So I just have to make sure that this is like the only yellowish color that we use in here so I don't get too overwhelmed. It ends up being more that split complimentary sort of thing. Let's continue our luck of not creating characters that look like barf. Yay. Let's do everything we know already. I don't think I need to change anything but the skin tone. I think that'll be our difference here. This mid thing is the darkest blue, the darker gray, and I went over it with a little bit of purple afterwards. Continue that shape. It does need to connect though. That's how I drew it. <laughs> Look how lazy I got with the hair before I at least added a squiggle. There I added a bunch of squiggles. This has just ended up being one blob. Now I don't think we need to incorporate any gray because it's not really overlapping with other sections of hair in any way. Probably do a little gray maybe back there where there'd be a lot less light. And maybe right here at the top, why not? Number four. I'll go over it again with the blue just to make it look a little less gray. Bump up the saturation a smidge. Now I didn't use the dark blue up at the top here because I thought that was a mistake in the last one. But I will use a little one just to separate that piece. And then I guess the earrings. I'm worried because earrings are a similar tone to this color. Maybe I'll just do like this and then blend into the lighter one. We could just darken up a little more. <laughs> this marker's getting dry already. It was so juicy at the beginning. Then we need the purple. Try and copy that because I think it turned out all right. This was like the blue and the purple mixed with a gray of some kind. I think I went purple on top of that again. 
I think I'll use that lightest blue since we don't use that anymore. Just so they're not white because it's boring me. Including the sock, why not? Lastly is that skin tone, which I think I was mixing this and this. Let's see if it works. Basically it's keeping it cool, but we're also adding a complimentary color. So let's layer it first with ivory. Technically it should kind of fit the color scheme still, but to make it a bit more cohesive, we're gonna throw in a little purple on top. Hopefully it'll look a little less gross. I'm not sure if it's a, the not working as a color scheme as much as I just really don't like this color. What do they call it? Ivory, manila folder. Don't get off till five. I could cut it up with a lot of names for this color. So let's go over that with our purple. Basically it takes the purple and adds yellow, which makes it more pink. Which in the end isn't actually the color scheme I was going for. I also don't really like how desaturated it is. So it fits the color scheme. Some blue eyeshadow. Should we still use blue for blush? That doesn't really make sense though, does it? Could use, what's the closest to red we've got? Purple. This works for maybe shading, but not really blush. Blend it out. It does look cohesive, and that is what I usually fail at. So I think I am leaning in the right direction here. Obviously we only kind of worked with one color scheme, so it would be interesting to try this again with completely different colors, maybe more warm color scheme and see if I have actually learned anything. But yeah, let's use blue for shading. This is really risky. Blend out that color a little. I think it went a little too blue, so I'm gonna go over it with the yellow maybe, cancel it out. We're using this for blush. Blend it up. Obviously it's getting a little muddy here. Basically just layered so much over the skin that the skin ended up pretty dark. So I think I just grab a gray, bring that down here just to darken this color. All right, hey, yeah, worked. It all comes down to not giving up too early, I guess. I want a little bit of shading on this light color, so let me grab a light gray. There's no one marker that's gonna do everything for you. I don't know if I explained any of what I've been doing, but I watched a video and I'll link it in the description by Zoe Hong. It's all about capturing a color scheme with marker specifically, which is something I think I've needed for a very long time and I finally bumped into it. I have her to thank for this. <laughs> well, that was awesome. So far, I am enjoying what I've learned. I am very, very happy with this. Now let's stick with the purple lips. I do prefer the blue skin tone because it's a little simpler. There's more contrast between the skin and the outfit here, even though we made a bit of a boo-boo down here, but we fixed it. So I'm wondering if there's any way I can kind of fix that. So one way would be to darken the outfit. You could also use like colored pencils. These are watercolor pencils because they're the ones I have on hand. I thought it would bring like a little saturation into the skin, which it does. I think our biggest problem is just this purple color. The option would be just change it to this darker purple color instead of this color. It'll be this color. I think I will go in with the purple though. Also, use the white. Just kind of do what we've done with the other ones. What color do I have in here? It's a little pinker than I think I need. Get a little seam. I'm thinking I'm gonna grab the blue out of this, the darker one. So now we're kind of moving away from <laughs> markers, but once you go so dark, you can only do so much. Try this more sky blue. Ooh, that's cool, adding texture with the pencils. Now I see why people like mixed media. I mean, I feel like I do mostly mixed media, but whenever I sit down to use a specific art supply, I never grab another one. What happens when you go over a watercolor pencil with Copic marker? Ooh, it just kind of blends out. And kind of like just blend it out. Maybe just add it to the blue side. I'm just gonna go over it again. Undo what I just did. Small failure does not outweigh the progress I feel like I made and I am very happy with it. I even like our little grayscale drawing. Again, I do think I need to try it out with different colors so I might do that next. Let me know if you're interested in seeing that. I don't think it really ended up being split complementary. The only yellow I used was that ivory. It's like now I'm adding yellow out here and it looks fine. So the color scheme works. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you had as much fun. Watch me draw my sketchbook and practice my color schemes as I did doing just that. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week. Best of luck with your color scheme dreams. And uh, yeah, hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.